Morning, ladies. I hope that everyone's doing well today. What an amazing weekend, right? And I mean, the day is still young, so there's so much to come. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking about um, God's grace and how God's grace is sufficient for us. So if you don't remember anything about what I say today, just remember that God's grace is sufficient for us and that God's grace is enough. So I don't know if you've ever had a thorn go into your flesh. Like um, when I grew up, I was one of those really adventurous little girls who'd run in the wild and I'd often get thorns in my flesh. So, and when you get a thorn on, on your leg, on your foot, it changes everything. You know, you start to limp and, um, you know, it just, it, 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 it spirals um, to even how you sit, how you move, because something has gone into your leg. And um, when we look at 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7, we see that Paul has a thorn. But the Bible doesn't tell us what, what type of thorn Paul was experiencing. So some Bible scholars say that um, there are over 30 possible thorns that Paul could have been experiencing at that one time. So in our lives, we can experience emotional thorns, physical thorns, mental thorns, spiritual thorns, financial thorns, and relational thorns. All these types of thorns can actually affect us, and they tend to have this domino effect that they tap into other parts of our lives. So if you have a thorn at work, it can start to affect your family. It can start to affect your children. If you have a thorn in your marriage, it automatically affects your family, affects your children. If you have a thorn at school, it can affect your friendships. It can affect how you cope with your schoolwork. So, and if you have a thorn of pain and you are needing God to bring healing into your life, it can affect your family, it can even affect you in your working space. So thorns tend to just have that effect of just, you know, tapping into various areas of our lives. Just like when you have a thorn on your leg, it affects how you walk, it affects your whole being. In 1 Corinthians 12 verses 8, we see Paul is speaking to God about his thorn. And it, and it reads, Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. We see Paul pleading with God about his thorn. And, you know, many of us go through situations, and many of us are going through situations in our lives, and we are pleading with God to do something about this thorn, to do something about our situation and sometimes we, you know, we even ask God, God, can you see my situation? God, can you do something right now about the thorn? And I love how God answers Paul. If you have your Bibles here today, please turn with me to 1 Corinthians 12 verses 9. It says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. And I'm reading it from the Amplified Version, so it, it amplifies it a bit. My grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough. Always available, regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. How beautiful is that? God's grace is sufficient for us. But how does this translate into day-to-day -day living? So what happens when we are in pain? You know, we obviously plead to God to do something. We plead to God to take away the pain, to take away the situation. And sometimes God removes it. God removes the thorn. Sometimes God even removes situa certain situations in our lives. But sometimes God doesn't remove the thorn. And if we remember Paul's situation, God didn't take out the thorn, but instead he reminded him that his grace is sufficient. 
His grace will carry us. His grace will sustain us. His grace will lead us. His grace will provide for us. His grace will protect us. And I know that for some of us, there are days when we don't even want to wake up in the morning. But God gives us the grace to wake up every day. God is actively working to give us strength to face each new day. Some of us here are in so much pain that we are on survival mode. We're just doing the bare minimum to just to survive. Some of us, there's some people in our lives that dragged us to sparkle because we just, we just feel like we, just, we cannot survive anymore. But God's word reminds us that in our weakness, his power is being perfected. And we see his power being completed in our lives, in our weaknesses. And the thing about pain as well is that it makes us feel inadequate, like we, we cannot cope, like it's not doable, like we just, we just can't do this anymore. But the beautiful thing about God's grace is that we find our adequacy in him. Even when we feel inadequate, we see our adequacy in God. You know, and, and, and another thing about pain is that often it makes us lose our confidence. And the beautiful thing, again, about God's grace is that he himself is our confidence and that we find our confidence in him. Pain can make us feel disheartened, can make us feel hopeless, can take away our joy. And again, God's grace still comes in and we find joy and happiness even in very difficult situations. And, you know, another very beautiful thing about God's grace is that it equips us. Currently, in my life, I have a thorn in my working space. And it's been two months that I've just been battling with this thorn in my working space. And like Paul, I have pleaded with God and I've had my share of cries. But boy, oh boy, has God's grace been equipping me in ways that I, I never thought possible. So God's grace is enough, and God's grace is sufficient for us. I just want to read um, quickly in Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Here, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart, and you will find rest or your souls. And as we face pain, as we face our daily thorns, Jesus calls us to come to him. And over and above us going to Jesus, Jesus promises to actually give us rest. And he promises to give us um, that, that our souls will find rest in him. In closure, I would like to read 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 to 9. And we all know it because we've been preparing for this for Sparkle. But it reads, We are pressured in every way, hedged in, but not crushed. We are perplexed, unsure of finding a way out, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down and persecuted, but we are not deserted to stand alone. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. And as we sit here today, and as we go through some of the most difficult situations in our lives, in our marriages, with our children, in our working spaces, in various different spheres that we find ourselves in, God's word says that we are not in despair. That we may be pressed, but we are not crushed. We may be perplexed, and concerned, but we are not in despair. We may feel hunted down and challenged, but we are not destroyed. Ladies, we are not alone. God's got us, 
and His grace is so sufficient for us. And wherever you are in your life, He sees your thorn, He sees your pain, He's heard your cries, and He's heard you pleading with Him. Before I close, I'd like us to just bow our heads. And um, I'd like to pray for the ladies that are going through emotional pain, whether in, in, in financial pain, relational pain, whatever pain, whatever thorn that you find yourself in today. Father God, we come to you today. And Lord God, we thank you that your grace is sufficient for us. We thank you, Lord God, that you, you bring perfect peace and you bring perfect rest. Father, we take upon the promises of your word today, and we thank you, Jesus, that you've got us. We thank you that we are not alone. We thank you that we are not in despair. We thank you that we are not crushed. We thank you that we are not destroyed. And Father, we take upon your yoke that is light today, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.